Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Did you enjoy the first session? I hope so. <laughs> so welcome to the session here is WordPress as a digital marketing hub, uh, the Gutenberg edition. And I am Rebecca Godin. So these are our wonderful um, organizers. Thank you for putting this on. Our wonderful sponsors and Bold Grid, thank you for the connector. <laughs> and of course, we're at WordCamp Toronto. Um, so a little bit about myself. As I said, I'm Rebecca Godin. I have been a freelance WordPress developer for a little bit over three years. In this time, I have made beautiful websites for lots of clients um, that were unfortunately not having traffic go to them. So they were just sad little websites on the internet with you know, crying because nobody came to visit them. Um, and I realized that making a website is just not enough anymore to really you know grow your business and get traffic to it so um, in September of this year I decided to just switch from being just a, a freelancer and making my own agency called geeky chick labs and pretty much what it is it's still a WordPress agency so we I make WordPress sites but I do all the digital marketing stuff as well uh, to hopefully drive you know the traffic to websites and grow businesses because that's what a website is really for is to help grow your business um, I am originally actually from Orlando Florida but I moved to LA 20 years ago my husband um, is Canadian actually he's from New Brunswick so I'm used to coming up and being in the cold a lot um, so I live in LA with my husband um, our son two dogs and a cat. <laughs> we have a little zoo that has grown smaller through the years. And when I'm not, you know, programming and doing digital marketing campaigns, I'm playing video games and tabletop games, reading, cooking. I really love to cook, baking especially, um, and being a hockey mom, because um, hockey is surprisingly very popular in California, and it takes up a lot of time. <laughs> I hit the thing. You can't see that link very well, but that is a link to the slides, and uh, you can follow along for future reference. I'll put it up again at the end so that you can um, get that as well over there. So this is what we're going to cover in here. We're pretty much going to cover plugins that go over uh, that work with your WordPress site to do reputation management, email marketing, yeah, <laughs> social media feeds and sharing, retargeting. SEO, Google Analytics, and then at the end, we're gonna talk about how Gutenberg is gonna affect this digital marketing hub that we're creating. So, reputation management, what is it? I think it is the most important thing to put on websites right now because it is um, something that is small to do and will have a big impact on businesses. Reviews are very important. Um, pretty much more and more consumers are going online to uh, make their purchasing decisions through you know, seeing reviews. So about 85% of consumers uh, trust online reviews as much as a personal reference from a friend or a family member. And of those, 73% of consumers are actually trusting uh, local businesses with online, great online reviews uh, more. Pretty much all the plugins I'm going to cover um, are going to be free plugins. Uh, most of them, like WP Review, this one is there's a free version and a premium version that you can pay for. Uh, this one is great because it actually lets you send your customers to your site to leave a review directly on your website. And then you can choose if you're going to do like a five star review out of 100% or 10 points. The really good thing about this is that when you have that negative review, you get to nip it in the butt <laughs> before it gets out there because one negative review actually hurts you way more than one positive review helps you. So if you're doing Yelp or Google or Facebook reviews, plugins make these plugins that allow you to bring in that information from the out, you know, these outside outlets onto your website. Uh, the only thing is you have to uh, put it, you know, on a sidebar or on a widget, hence the widget. Except for the Facebook reviews, it didn't keep the naming conventions. I'm not sure why. But you know, it's really simple. You put the plugin on your activate it on your on your WordPress site, put in your account information for those, and then you can kind of put where you want with a short code, say where you want to put it on. 
So email marketing is one of the top three uh, digital marketing channels for uh, companies right now. Um, they're the top three choices because they're really great at telling your brand story, gaining brand awareness, and um, <clears throat> just increasing sales. Uh, I feel that email marketing is one of the best, better choices because it's pretty complex, micro bit personalized, and the most important thing is you can really target specific segments uh, of your, you know. Avalanche, a lot of people died. It was like a big news story. And instead of just MailChimp for their email marketing uh, service. So uh, this plugin called MailChimp for WordPress by Barracode, it's really great because it lets you create custom forms and then put them onto your website. And then you go to MailChimp pretty much and get the key, uh, put it in the plugin, and then it links uh, pretty much all the information people put in and it goes directly to your MailChimp account. So then you have a copy of whatever's going on, um, of the information on your WordPress site, but you also have their information automatically sent to MailChimp. Mad Mimi <laughs> is a great uh, alternative to MailChimp. A lot of people don't know about it um, because it is, I think it has a little bit of bad connotations because it's a GoDaddy uh, kind of subsidiary. But uh, for p most people that have not used um, an email service provider kind of thing, I usually recommend going with Mad Mimi because it's very easy, intuitive, and simple to use, but it still gives you um, a lot of power to be able to segment and do drip campaigns and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, they have a free version and, of course, a paid version. Um, if I tell people, if you can, definitely go up to the medium paid version which is about $10, well, 10 American dollars, I'm not sure on the Canadian, um, a month because it gives you a little bit more story. Everybody, a lot of people platforms. I don't have a link to it because it is a premium one, um, but pretty much it lets you make any custom kind of form that you want and it connects to any email service provider, uh, email marketing service provider. So it'll connect to MailChimp, to Mad Mimi, to AdSense, ConvertKit. If you need that functionality and the extra stuff, go for it. But for most people, it's not needed. You can use uh, Ninja Forms, which is what I use personally to create um, custom forms, like more on the Gravity Forms side. Uh, that is free. The extension for MailChimp you have to pay for. Now, uh, they do not support Mad Mimi anymore on Ninja Forms 3.0, which is the current one. If you uh, want to use Mad Mimi, you have to find um, Ninja Forms 2.9 pretty much. Um, a lot of people use Contact Form 7 for their contact form. Free extension. I haven't used one. It's in my repertoire, um, but it is. It gives you a lot of fancy stuff. It lets you do premium hustle. It gives you the pop-up slide-ins and the email opt-ins that are a little bit nicer. That they come in or they pop up, and that's what you dev. Um, so I normally don't. I feel that. That kind of stuff is distracting. I hate it when I have pop-ups on, on um, websites that I go to. But if someone wants that functionality, it's available there. I'll do questions at the end. <laughs> so going back to what I said at the beginning of the email marketing, I'm going way too fast, <laughs> of the email marketing slide, the top three choices are the best for telling your brand story, gaining brand awareness, um, you know, increasing sales. Social media is actually the number one digital marketing platform for that. And a website is number two. And these are two that really need to be connected. So, um, cause you know, we're building that hub. The analogy I like to use is that your, your website should be like Grand Central Station where it's the main place that information goes in and out of. So with email, with the social media, you're going to want to always make sure that your web address is in your, you know, social media account bio information, of course, to bring people that don't know your website, but have found you on social media. 
And then you want to always have the extra content from your social media accounts on your website. So people that know about your website can see that extra information and know about your social media accounts. So if you have an Instagram feed or a Facebook feed or a Twitter feed that you want to bring in, Smash Balloon makes these wonderful plugins. Um, and I normally stick with these if you only have one of one. If you want to bring in more than one feed or you want to do social media sharing at the same time, this is probably the only one that I tell people that is premium that you should buy <laughs> and you should spring for if you're going to do more than one feed or you're going to do that and that social media sharing um, because it, it does everything. So the Feed Them Social does the Instagram feed, uh, brings in Facebook, brings in Twitter, it brings in uh, YouTube, and it does Pinterest, uh, all those five social media feeds, plus the social media sharing and liking icons. And if you've been working with WordPress for a while, you know the convention that you, don't, you wanna minimize the amount of plugins that you use. So this kind of kills you know seven birds in one stone and definitely helps with that keeping the plugins to the minimum. This one's a little different. So this one's called WP to Twitter. Um, I like this one because even though I don't use Twitter, <laughs> so this one's great because instead of bringing in your Twitter feed to your uh, WordPress site, it actually will send a tweet out every time that you put a new blog post up. And it gives you the option to go ahead and say, that you just want an excerpt of your uh, post with the link, the read more link, or you can just say, hey, there's a new post, come and check it out, and then it'll give you the link to it. And then if you just wanna have social media sharing and like buttons on your pages and posts, then you're gonna go ahead, this is the one I've always used, is social media share buttons and social sharing icons by Ultimately Social. But like I said earlier, and I'm, I'm going to reemphasize this, if you're going to do that and a feed, you know, go for Feed Them Social. Feed Them Social um, does have a free version on their website. You can't get it on WordPress plugin repository, but it gives you very limited, very limited functionality. So that's why I always say spring for that. That's probably the only one that I say, go for it, pay for it. It's worth it. <laughs> So we're gonna go on to retargeting. I find that this one is the one that most small businesses don't know about, um, so then they're, they're not using it. But how many of us have been on Amazon and you're shopping, you leave Amazon, you go to Facebook or to a website that uses um, you know, Google, Google ads, and then all of a sudden you're seeing the ads for what you were searching for on Amazon or you go to American Airlines or some other big airline like that and the same thing happens when you leave. Well, it's all done through retargeting. So basically, this is you know, a little tracking code or cookie <laughs> that we put on our site uh, and then it'll bring the information in. You kinda wanna, the way it works is that you set up certain events to happen. So when the event happens, that's when the tracking is implemented. There's two ways of doing that. Of course, the Facebook one is done through a Facebook pixel. So you have to have a, a Facebook business page and then you go and apply for a pixel code and you'll get that. And then with uh, this plugin, pixel your site or the pixel cat, uh, these are ones that would allow you to put in your pixel code onto into the plugin, so it'll put the code on all your pages for you. Uh, you set up the events that you want to happen, say like they fill out their, their shopping cart but leave it, that kind of thing, or they visit a certain page or they look at certain products. Um, those are the kind of events you would set up. So then when that happens, the pixel code you know, kicks in and then when they go to Facebook, they're gonna see ads for, for your business. And then with the Google tag, it's pretty much the same thing. You get your, your, through all your Google console manager now is where you get all your information that you would be able to do this. And I always found the name a little weird because it's Duracell Tomy's Google tag manager for WordPress, but it's Thomas Geiger, but you know. 
<laughs> but it works the same way. So you would put in your Google, all your Google stuff and the Google tags that you want associated with your page. And then when they go to a, a page that has the Google ads implemented, that's when they see all your stuff. Um, like I said, this is probably the one that most small businesses miss, um, but it's a really, really great strategy because the more that you're in the mind of your potential customer or client, the more likely they are to come back and actually purchase from you. So moving on to SEO and analytics. This, this is something that everyone should be doing on their website already. So we're gonna cover it just a little bit. Uh, everyone should have an SEO uh, kind of pro, you know, plugin. The king of SEO plugins for WordPress is Yoast. So there is the free version and the premium version, but usually the, the free is, is usually more than enough for most people. Um, the way if you haven't used Yoast, the way that it works is that um, it allows you to go to each page or post and put in the uh, one of the keywords that you want this page to be looked for and ranked on, you know, your, your search engines. And then it'll go ahead and give you information on how to improve the content that you have on your page to get, you know, good SEO or okay SEO or bad SEO. It'll tell you all that. Um, like I said, the... I love this because of that. Uh, con you know, there's the wonderful saying going around that content is king for SEO, but I like to tweak that a little bit because it's not content, it's quality content that is really the king for SEO. Um, because if your content isn't good, doesn't, isn't user friendly, doesn't really give people the information they're looking for, there's really no, no point in having your content because that's what a website is for. It is to give information about your business um, and make it easy to find. And then everyone should have Google Analytics already running on their website. Um, the two big ones, uh, plugins for this is Google Analytics Dashboard for WP. That's the one that I actually use. I've been using it since it was the former name of GA. DWP, um, but the most popular one actually um, is the Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. So this is the same thing. You go to Google Console or Google Analytics, you get your code, you put it in here, it tracks everything for you. When you go to your WordPress dashboard, you'll have a simplified version of the analytics that you can see there. So it's all in one place. Um, it's as actually going to Google Analytics to get, you know, the more detailed reports, but it kind of gives you an overview of what's going on on your website in the back. And then we get to the big questions on everyone's mind is, how is Gutenberg going to affect this digital marketing hub, all these plugins, and just, you know, my WordPress, my WordPress site in general? I actually, and it's pretty good because I think it's not going to change much on how things run for your plugins and themes and things of that nature. Uh, because, you know, as it is right now, uh, it will support classic <laughs> editor for quite a while. Go to another if you don't, if when you bring in your, your content into Gutenberg, um, you know, the old content will stay as classic, it really more affects the newer content that you're putting in. And then I'm going to just give you a few advice on how to develop transition a little bit easier. And also, it's just good, um, good web development practices in general that you're, we're going to talk about. So it's not just, doesn't just work for Gutenberg. So the most important thing, I think, is always having a testing or a staging site. If you are using um, WP Engine or one of the premium managed hosting, WordPress hosting sites, you're already going to have this usually built in. So it's a testing site, I call it testing site, it's a staging site, <clears throat> and you just hit a button where it creates a copy of your live website for you to play around with on the back end that isn't visible you know, for everybody. And this is where you're usually gonna do all your stuff. So even without Gutenberg, this is where you would do all your plugin updates, make sure everything's working, nothing gets broken when you have all these updates. So for Gutenberg, this is the first thing I tell people is set up your testing site, 
go ahead and or to upgrade to WordPress 5.0 with Gutenberg or you know even install Gutenberg to play with beforehand because if it breaks it's easy to or you don't like how it works you can just go ahead and activate this plugin and everything's back to the classic way and like I said don't be afraid to play and explore with Gutenberg on this test site because of the fact that it is just a test site. That's all it is. It's not going live. Uh, when you're ready for it to go live and everything's working, then you can hit the button that says push to live site. And that's when all this information goes to your live site. And if you don't like how it looks or works or it's broken or anything like that, there's the other button that says, you know, revert back to live site. So it cleans all of the stuff you've been playing with and brings back that live site onto the testing site. And I feel essentially that Gutenberg is going to help this digital hub on the long run because of that whole quality content is key for, you know, getting people to the site um, because it's going to make it easier to do uh, the formatting and making the design better. So, and for Gutenberg, you know, everything's all in little blocks or sections. So you get that styled however you want. But say you don't like where it is on the page later. Well, you can move things around easier. It, like I said, it's just easier to format and make things pretty, as I like to say. It's like putting the makeup on your website. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So in conclusion, I hope that you have seen that using your digital marketing site in this way, or your web website in this way, really creates that, that hub, that digital marketing hub. Um, it makes it easy, convenient for all your clients and customers to see a lot of information in one place. It makes it easier for you as well because you can manage and see all this information in one place for you as well. So pretty much you're turning your WordPress site into a tool to grow your business. And that's it. Thank you. Mm. And then there's that. And then we're going to do questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. Question about SEO. If, 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 you're a widget maker, if you're a widget maker in Ontario and you sell, and you, your web page says, we are a widget maker in Ontario, we sell big widgets and small widgets and fat widgets and little widgets, do you still need an SEO plugin? So your, your question is pr pretty much if you're in a local area and you only concentrate in that one little area if you need SEO. Or, or a particular, if you're focused on a particular niche market or niche subject and your web, con your web content is focused on that topic or subject or whatever. So, so more of like the niche market and if you still need SEO, yes. SEO is still necessary no matter what. There's different levels of SEO. So there is that local SEO, there's the national, there's the global. And even for the niche, it's, it makes it easier for people to find you on the internet. So, so if you're, well, I'm trying to figure, uh, uh, if you're a Lady, you're Lady, you're Lady Gaga website, um, Google won't, and all your content is about Lady Gaga, that won't be enough to ramp you high. And, uh, well, the SEO plugins are just a tool to help you rank higher. Make sure that your content is written the proper way because uh, SEO has changed a little. So it used to be of just, if you have, if it is a Lady Gaga site, that you have Lady Gaga all over the place. Um, so yes, the, the search engines are, let's say they're algorithms, they're computers, but they're looking for certain things that make it easy for people to read. So even if you have Lady Gaga all over the, you know, your keyword all over the place, and it's too, you know, so it makes it easy for people to find, but now the way the SEO is written is, is done is if it's not easy to read for people, then it's not gonna rank as high. Um, another thing that's very important now is making sure that um, your website is mobile friendly. That is one of the main things that helps you rank higher on SEO. But with the plugins, make sure that you are actually meeting all those goals that help you rank higher. Thank you. Yes. Um, I have a question about um, your advice on trying to sometimes replicate the functionality of page builders like lead pages and click funnels on WordPress. Do you have any advice on how we can do that? I would say specifically on how um, the checkout processes sometimes with digital products on click funnels and lead pages is super easy. 
how would you replicate something like that on WordPress? Is that even possible? Um, <laughs> so the question is how to uh, use like click funnel and lead pages on WordPress. It's pretty much you're going to use those plugins or outside services uh, with in conjunction with WordPress. I, I didn't cover a lot of the outside services that is really use um, with WordPress, but they're they're there and they're paid, which is usually why I don't unless people want to go that extra mile of things for those kinds of things. I don't talk about them in here. Okay. It, it would just be going to that service and paying for it and putting it in WordPress. So my, my question was, see, I was talking about specific functions. So for example, if you were to get, let's say, a lead page in your site, you'd be able to have like you click a button and then the person's able to fill out their entire email or mm -hmm. purchase something through mobile. Do you have any like advice on how to do that on WordPress? Because I don't want to go there because I love WordPress. So I don't want to go to those people. Um, it would you can do it in several ways of just creating a special page landing page that, that does that kind of same thing and then put in the um, the form like with gravity form or ninja form or that kind of thing okay. thank you yes uh, do you have uh, any quick question on spot or any about any examples of sites you've done that use the plugins you've mentioned well if you if you go to my website which is geekychicklabs.com okay. you'll see my portfolio where they're all there <laughs> Yeah, on the majority of them, I will use those. Um, even on my own website, I use those. <laughs> Labs.com, yep. Yes? Sorry, I might have missed what you said earlier, but as for Google Tag Manager, is there a particular advantage to placing your tags using a plugin as opposed to just copy-pasting a code that you can get to? It's just easier for, so let me repeat the question. So your question was, uh, is it, better to you know what's the benefit of using the google tag manager plugin than just copying and pasting um, as a developer hey you can totally just copy and paste um, the plugins are usually for people that are not developers and it still makes it a little bit easier even when you are a developer to just have the plugin and just put the code in one place and have it you know generated on all your pages for you yes do you have any plugins you recommend for semantic markup <laughs> no, well, I, uh, let me repeat the question. If I have any plugins for semantic markup, I do not um, because I'm, because of my background that I actually started doing uh, C and C++ programming way back when, I like having a lot of control and I actually make all of my, uh, I do custom uh, themes for everybody and I do not use page builders or anything of that nature. So I have good control over that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, you started off the presentation talking to Yes, it is. I have, um, so what is the difference between like MailChimp and Constant Contact? I have never used Constant Contact. I have not had any of my clients use it um, because every, most people want to start off with the free to see how it goes and then, the, then they build up from there. So it's usually with MailChimp. I think it's, uh, mostly it's just that you have a little bit more functionality with the premium ones that I've, I've been aware of. Even with MailChimp, from the free to the paid version, there is just more functionality that you can use. Um, but like I said, with those, if you wanna make your own plugin, you know, your own forms, it's gonna be like uh, Ninja Forms or Gravity Forms that allow you to make your forms and then move to that. But like I said, for me, like most people that I work with only use MailChimp or if they don't use anything, I start them on with the Mail, mail Mad Mimi. Well, on the free version, I think it's 5,000, 2,000, yeah. I'm like, I know it's in the thousands. And then um, it's how many lists you have. It's one list for the free. And then you have to go up from there. Um, and then Mad Mimi is like 500 contacts for the free. And, you know, it's unlimited send outs at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's when MailChimp starts. 
It may not be worth it. Um, it starts going for two lists. I had two lists for a while and it was like $5 a month for the extra list. So it's not too bad, but then when you, it's, it also depends on the amount of contacts that you have. But if you're happy with what you have, I, you know, unless you're looking for a cheaper alternative, <laughs> which it sounds like you might be, then that's when you, you know, we do a little bit of research. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. So, you mentioned smash balloon. A lot of people recommend buffers. I, I, these are the ones that I discovered and just stayed with because they've worked well. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot more plugins than what I, I, I covered. But like I said, these are the ones that I've been using for a while. <laughs> yes. Um, for So to repeat your question, uh, for the Facebook uh, pixel retargeting, you have to be doing Facebook ads. I don't, I don't do Facebook ads. I don't really reach as many people. I haven't quite figured it out, so I'll get there. <laughs> I mean, I haven't really, I'm trying to think. I think you do have to have a would. I mean, <laughs> I've tested it out I think in this, it's the same block. It will apply, but I think it's not paying no ads. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. I just want to reiterate that Duracell told me is a godsend if you're more on the marketing end of things uh, and if you're doing Google Ads, conversion tracking and remarketing, it makes things very it, simple. It, it does. I have to go to the developer and beg them to drop some code in for it. So I highly recommend it. There's, there's like six or eight different things it, it, it helps with, mostly Google tools, that it's, it's very valuable. Yes. Yes. Can you mind that again? Yeah. The Duracell Tomy, it was under the uh, remarketing page I'm like I'll get there um, but like I said if you go and download the ad uh, the slide deck uh, all of them have links to the actual um, I get there <laughs> yeah so the last one Anything else? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you.